the end of May beginning well almost into June it's the last week that river fishing is allowed in fly fishing we arrived at Maritzburg we're gonna shoot down to the Midlands just past Nottingham Road I'm not exactly sure where we're going and that's why we're relying on Jan from the Kingfisher Maritzburg we're stopping here he's gonna kit us out I've never really done river fishing for trout only really the dams the controlled environments so the river is something new very excited and who better to go with than Jan um, any, everyone who knows Jan here in Maritzburg from a fly fishing perspective the best advice you can get um, so if you're in the area and that's something you want to look into is a bit of fly fishing Jan is the right person to speak to at Kingfish and Peter Maritzburg let's go meet Jan this is Jan you guys have met him before um, so Jan, yeah, quite excited. I was just telling our audience that this is my first for river fishing. We're uh, we're nearly at the end of the season, but the fish are still there. So yeah, no, so it should be good. The rivers are the rivers are by all reports and indications, the rivers looking really, really good at the moment. So so that's top water, top water, dry fly, dry, dry fly is my name of the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, no, so specifically what we would prefer to do, okay. um, and all catch and release. We don't eat brown trout. They kind of like they, they've got like a bit, of a, main species bit of a snob value. They do. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So where we where we fishing is specifically brown trout water. Brown trout. It's a prize fish. It's something I think I've caught one in my life. Uh, also in a dam in Dulstrup. Right. It is lucky. But but that's it. Um, other than that, I haven't seen many of them. Now a bit of kitting up. Okay. So what we're going to be running with is a, a Daiwa Wilderness um, in a three weight three weight stick. It is a seven foot six four piece. So your so your stick is basically pieces of pieces of, pieces like that. Um, and yeah, we're going to be running it with a floating line, obviously, for the dry fly work. And yeah, we don't really need big big reels with heavy drag systems where we're going. So for the smaller fish, Daiwa Lochmo standard click and pull reel. So very simple, no drag system, just a simple click. Um, we're going to put a little bit of backing on there just for just to fill up the reel because it's old school, older school medium arbor um, and you want to fill the reel up a little bit and basically all of your modern modern fly lines these days are built in what we call a weight forward configuration so if we take a standard standard fly line 30 meters 90 foot equivalent thereabouts is that a, is that in a weight forward configuration you have uh, the front third of the fly line is basically the belly or the heavy section the taper section that you're casting and the rest is basically no taper very thin what we call a running line there's no join or anything it's a con it's still a single continuous line, so there's no join between the head and the and the running line, as it were. And a double taper essentially has got no taper to it, so it's got a taper in the front and a taper at the back, and it's continuous all the way through. From an economic point of view, essentially you've got two fly lines in one, yeah. Because after a, after a couple of seasons, if the front section of your line is wearing, you can essentially just turn the whole fly line around and you've got a whole brand new fly line. So yeah, so I mean a double tap is very nice. The nice thing about the Snowby lines these days, most of your modern fly lines also, is they have a loop-to-loop -loop connection on the end of it. Oh. So the loop-to-loop, -loop, so no, no fiddling around with braided loops, very simple to attach your leader straight onto the line, no knots required, very, very simple. So what we're going to use is just a standard knotless monofilament tapered leader, and we'll use a Siglon. Uh, 4X has got a slightly thicker butt section, so I prefer 4X. 4X will guys will say it's a little bit heavy for the small stream work that we're doing, but I prefer the 4X tapered leader because it's slightly heavier in terms of turning over flies. Should we need to to be throwing nymphs that are that are slightly weighted, you want something to, something to turn over. But otherwise, also also if there's if there's a bit of wind, if you've got a bulky, chunky dry fly that you want to turn over in wind, you need something with a little bit of butt strength just to turn the, okay. turn the fly over. Okay. But the 4X, the end of that is, is essentially about six pounds, is a bit thick for the dry fly work that we're doing. So generally what we will do is we will put a short section of 5X tip it, tip it onto the end of that. Short section, about 30 centimeters. Uh, about two to three feet. So you have a standard nine foot tapered leader as it comes out the packet, and then we add about two to three feet of tippet section on the end of that, so you end up with a leader 11 to 12 feet. Okay. Plenty, plenty for where we're going. You'll see tomorrow where, we, where we're fishing. Generally very small stream area, but where we're going is specific pure brown trout territory sure pure brown trout so that's one of the main reasons why guys actually come to natal we have two 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 probably the most pristine brown trout streams in the country so which is the moy the upper section of the moy and then the upper section of the bushmans okay then last but not least flies 
Yeah, so flies, generally we'll be using we'll be using a selection of dry flies. We're gonna do some fly time as well. Yes. Uh, for you guys. We're gonna tie a variation of a rab for that. Um, otherwise your parachutes, parachute mayflies are, are really popular. And also emerger style flies can come out. Is so, this a seasonal time of the year or um, dry flies? No, no dry fly. I'm I'm kind of like known for fishing fishing exclusively dry fly. Okay. I fish a nymph only if I'm really, really, really pushed. Okay. So I fish dry fly almost exclusively. Um, I, tie, I tie a personal version um, of an emerger style fly, which is, which is a combination between a rab and a clinkhammer. So it's also a parachute, it's an emerger. Um, and by, by an emerger, what we say is that, is that if we can style this, style this as a fly, for example, an emerger pattern sits half and half in the water. So it sits with his bum, bum sitting in the water, whereas whereas a pure dry fly sits sits purely, okay. purely on the surface. So this of water. is a pure dry. So that's a pure emerger. dry, and this 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 is an emerger, and I tie a variant of between the two because I like the big bushy bushy effect of the rab um, and the post, and then and then with the with the drop bum in the water, I think it really does something for the fish. The fish generally can't leave the thing alone. So here we go. So yeah. So basically, I mean, you need. You need like three flies really for a day for a day on the on the rivers here for the brown trout. Okay now totally unprepared so I need to get some clothes. Kingfisher makes this nice quick dry material pants. Uh, just grab some water water boots and then I'm considering the jacket I'm still thinking. <laughs> so essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to load the backing onto the onto the fly reel. Let's pull it around. Because it's a double taper fly line, you've got a loop connection on both of the ends of the fly line. Essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to, again, you can loop the backing onto the fly line. It just makes changing fly lines very easy if you ever have to. And as I said, the same with the leader. So we've got the, the end of the fly line. What we're going to have to do here is make a loop on the end of the, the backing. So generally you want a loop that's about the same size as the as a spool because the loop's got to go over that. Okay, so double one. Through the second half again. And then just close the loop. Makes that nice figure of eight over the top. Come the tag end. That then goes through the fly line over the spool. And then seating of the fly line on the loop. What you always want to ensure is you want the want the loops when you're making a loop to loop connection to make them make sure that they're holding like that as opposed to a folded over loop in this here for example if it folds over like that it makes what's called a biting or a cutting loop um, not that it really matters in this instance, but it's more it's more prevalent on the front end of the fly line with your leader. Um, when your leader is folded over like that, that biting or cutting, particularly for still water applications for the bigger fish, um, it will break at some stage. It will be a big fish, and I will hear you scream wherever you are. <laughs> of course, that's <laughs> Murphy's. That's Murphy's law. So yeah, but on the on the smaller application, like it's not too serious, none too serious. Um, so again, now we just wind the fly line like we did before. 